Welcome to Aztecs Now on the Fowler Center across from the coaches' offices right here. And Rocky Long will join us after the Aztecs. Talk about smooth transitions in coaching. Uh, Brady Hoke, 8-4, and four, beats the Naval Academy in the Poinsettia Bowl. Aztecs' first bowl since 1998. Now here they are again. Different coach, Rocky Long, smooth transition. 8-4 and four, again at a bowl game against uh, Louisiana Lafayette, the New Orleans Bowl on December 17th. Big doings at San Diego Stadium football, back-to-back -back ball games for the first time in the Division I era. And they did the same thing. It's a bizarre, bizarre situation. And Rocky has said, if I knew how to fix it, I'd go fix it. But they start slowly. They were down 14-0 in Las Vegas and went on to win that game. They were down 21 to nothing and went on to beat Fresno State by a touchdown. Just amazing. In that first quarter, when they're down 21 to nothing, here's the key. They scored twice in that second quarter as Ronnie Hillman ran for another, another almost 200-yard day, goes 20 yards here for a touchdown. That cuts the lead 21-7. Then, before halftime, Ryan Lindley, 45 yards to number 24, Colin Lockett, maybe the fastest of the Aztecs, former defensive back, who's had some big plays. He sets them up. First and goal, two-yard line, Chad Young on fourth down. Punches it in, the former walk-on fullback from Laverne. 21-14, the Aztecs began their comeback, not in their usual second half, but just before halftime. Then early third quarter, defense comes on. Number nine, Miles Burris, sacks David Carr. Derek Carr, one of his two sacks on the day, starts things off. What a, what a great play, first play of the third quarter on defense on the next drive. That same guy. Number 13, Ronnie Hillman goes for 68 down to the six-yard line, eventually tying the game, one of his four short touchdown runs. And then late in the fourth quarter with the game tied at 28. Guess who? Da da, Ronnie Hillman from the two, Aztecs 35 28, and the Bulldogs driving back, and Larry Parker, seventh interception of the season on a deflection, a great dive, end of game. The oil can in this long traditional rivalry goes to San Diego State 35 28. Back with Rocky Long for the final time, but not the final game of this 2011 season. Rocky, congratulations. I, I don't, I, I know you don't like to be fawned on and blowing smoke and, you know, kind of push it aside and, and don't want to hate compliments, but this has been a seamless transition. You take over for, for another coach and you got an 8-4 record and you didn't miss a beat. Nothing fell through the cracks. That's not easy to do. I congratulate you on a marvelous, marvelous season. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's great that we're in a bowl game. We were a little, <laughs> little shaky there for a while, I think, but I think our team deserves it. And then I think it was I think we had a little bit tougher schedule this year than yeah. last year. Oh, yeah. And I think it's always harder to play when people expect you to win. And I thought that most people expected us to win this year. And not just our team. I think outside influences expected us to win. And uh, that's harder to do than when it's the first time doing something. And it fascinates me because I've been here a long time uh, with the Aztecs since 1978. And it became, you know, winning and it went down to no winning. And it's fascinating how that mindset after a one season, suddenly it's, you better win. We expect you to win instead of, oh, this is unbelievable. This is great. This hasn't happened. Rocky, thank you, thank you, thank you. But it, it is. It's, it's a different. People get expectations raised. The bar goes up, and then it becomes a different attitude, which I think is kind of surprising. <laughs> I know. It, it surprised me a little bit, but it's, it's not unexpected. I mean, it, we're in a pro town, mm -hmm. and sometimes pro towns are a little more like that than maybe a small college town are. Uh, but to be honest with you, our expectations is, is to win, too. And sure. And we got to learn to live with those expectations. We got to learn to uh, uh, play teams that are supposedly better than us and not get too excited about it and go about our normal business. We, I mean, if we don't have the expectations, no one else should. And we have just as high or probably higher expectations than everybody else. Does. That's a good thing. Uh, it's, it's a good thing. Good thing if people care. Sometimes we care too much and expect too much, but they can't be dissatisfied here uh, at uh, eight and four. Was there a time in terms of the high and the low? I thought the Washington State game was a swing game. They're not a great team, but they were so much improved with great skilled people and just terrific wide receivers. To me, that was the one that I thought, not an over-the-hump type of game, but it really could have gone either way and changed the, the look of the season and, and the record of it. Was there a high and a low for you in terms of one you expected that you didn't get or not? Well, I, I think that was a great game. Yeah. And, I, and I thought at the time Washington State was really good. Mm -hmm. And I think they have, like you said, great skilled guys. And I thought that was a pivotal game. I, th I thought the best game we played all year was at Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had just come off getting beat by TCU in a hard-fought game uh, that we had a chance to win until we threw an interception. Uh, so the team came back in four or five days. It was a short week. We played really good at Air Force. And then I think the long, the 16-day layoff, uh, we lost a little bit of uh, consistency, a mm -hmm. little bit of momentum. 
And then I, I thought our team was ready to make a fight at it uh, with uh, Boise State. I thought it was going to be a great football game. And we turned the ball over three times early in the game and let them get a jump start. And if, if you take the jump start out of there, that was a great football game. But you can't never take that away. And so I think the low was when we turned the ball over so many times early against Boise State. I think the high is when we beat Air Force because mm -hmm. I think that's the best the team played on offense, defense, and special teams. And that's a bowl team. We're talking about Air Force going to a bowl, among others, in this uh, Mountain West Conference. Let's go back to Fresno State. And I, <laughs> I'd say being down 21 to nothing, but you've been there before. You did it the week before, down 14 to nothing Vegas. That's just the way the Aztecs play the game. But what was going through your mind at 21 to nothing? Well, I, you know, obviously when you go down, you start worrying. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but like you say, and, and I don't know why this is. I know. And next year's team probably won't be like this because mm -hmm. every team has their own personality. And I don't know why it is, but we have learned to live with it. <laughs> and we have learned never to panic. Good point. And our, and our players never panic. And our players keep playing hard. And they start playing better. And we get ourselves back in most games. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know why. Uh, we tried several things to change it in practice mm -hmm. so that we would start games faster. And practice has changed, and practice looked better earlier in practice. Then we get to the game, and it was the same old thing. Now, Amazing. I really think it's better to start slow and finish fast Absolutely. than it is to start fast and finish slow. Amen. Now, someday we're going to learn to play the whole game, and then we're <laughs> going to be pretty good. <laughs> they always say it's not like in a season, not how you start, how you finish. Same thing in a game. It's not how the Aztecs start. It's how they finish. And I thought, you know, that's interesting because they had at the coin toss, they had two lieutenant colonels, military guys, and I thought, you know, that's fitting. Because this is a military town, and I hear from military people talking about those Aztecs, man. They're tough. Those, and, and I like, hope you get that kind of feedback because it's the same kind of like a military. You have a setback early. I'm not comparing war to football, but you have a setback. You don't hang your head, and your guys are like that. They hang in there. Well, I, 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 thought, I think we're getting tougher. I think we're getting tougher mentally and physically. And, and like you say, we hang in there. I mm -hmm. mean, things don't look real pretty at times, but we hang in there and keep fighting. And, and it's a funny thing because we've had several kids play with injuries this year yeah. that I don't think they would have played with in the past, and I don't think they grew up uh, with the attitude that you play with those kind of things. And I, and I have heard from several military people through email and things where they say that that's how the military is. Amen. If you don't, if you don't push through when things aren't right, and you can't be physically 100% all the time, but you've got to keep pushing through, or guess what? bad things might happen, and they appreciate it. So I'm glad we're in a military town. No, it's true. I've heard that from a lot of people. And you got J.J. Ortelli out there. He's got a busted elbow. He's got a brace on there. Ronnie Hillman's had a high ankle sprain. He's back after a week and running for 180 and 170 yards. I mean, these guys have taken on that toughness. You've got to be, got to be pleased with that. In terms of the team, what you got this year, and you lost all your wide receivers, I don't mean by graduation, injured wide receivers and so forth. Overall, is this the kind of team you expected, or are you disappointed in, in, in some spots? Well, it's the kind of team I expected because I, I thought we'd play hard, and mm -hmm. I thought we'd fight to the end. Uh, I think there was a couple games that, uh, that were disappointed that we didn't play better in. Uh, you know, and I think that that is a maturing process that our program mm -hmm. is going through. I think there were some games in our minds that were more important than other games. Uh -huh. And so the emotional state of our team made it so much that they wanted to play so bad and wanted to win so bad. They didn't play consistently. They didn't play at their normal pace. They didn't relax and just play ball. But I think that's a maturing of the program. And I think you have to be on those stages several times before you learn how to handle yourself on those stages. And we'll get there. And I find it fascinating because people criticize, an example, North Turner, a friend of ours, gets criticized. He's very professorial and doesn't seem to, you know, rant and rave. And you got people say, we need someone out there to scream at him and get him ready to go out there and play. And then you guys go out there and, and play and have been too excited early on to execute, say, your defense. I find that to be an interesting dichotomy. Get them ready, get them out there, froth it in the mouth, but then they're, they're, they're too excited. It's hard to find a happy medium, isn't it? Yeah, well, the great teams in college football are the ones that go into the game with the same attitude every time, no matter who they're playing. So, so they play very consistently. Mm -hmm. They're emotional. Don't, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. They are emotional, and they're ready to play, but they handle, handle their emotions so well that they play consistently. And if you look at our team, we're not a consistent football team, so we don't handle our emotions very well. The only emotion we handle really well is, guess what, we're down. <laughs> but that's no big deal. We're coming back. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's the old, if you can do it. Muhammad Ali said, if you can do it, it ain't bragging. The Aztecs fall behind. They can come back, and they will. And they're not bragging. And we're coming back with Aztecs now with more on Rocky Long in a minute.
Aztecs get the phone call. They get a bid to a bowl at eight and four. And I know Aztec fans, a lot of six and sixes and a six and seven are out there, a lot of seven and fives. And you shouldn't have had to wait that long, but you did. Whatever, but you're in a bowl game, back to back years. That has not happened for the Aztecs in the Division One era. Been to New Orleans lately? <laughs> no, I've only been to New Orleans a couple of times too. And <laughs> and I think it'll be a, a very great experience for myself and sure. our team sure because it's a completely different culture and it'll be fun to it'll be fun to be there i know she mentioned to me when when the, the team bus was on its way to the hotel there in vegas with all that glitter and you thought boy it's really different here they talk about coaching distractions or your team new orleans is a, is a baby vegas it's it's going to have some distractions coach <laughs> well I, I think the biggest distraction is the team we're playing because they're <laughs> they're right down the road and they're excited about being there and they're it's going to be like their home game so. sure so we're going to have to be ready for those distractions on game day, too. Louisiana Lafayette, you've already looked at film. You haven't, you haven't wasted any time. You've already seen that team. Tell us about them. Well, they're a team that uh, going into the season were picked really, really low in their conference and nationally. Have a brand new coach that's done a great job uh, through hard off-season workouts and a belief in their, their teammates. They've started playing very, very well. They got better as the season went along. They have some really good skilled guys. They're tough, physical guys that play hard to the end. I mean, and because of the excitement of the bowl game and their unexpected success, uh, they're playing with great confidence and the excitement of them being close to home. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going into some place that uh, it's just going to be a few of us, and we're going to have to go <laughs> back to back and fight it out. Hey, that sticks to use to that. No big deal. Been to West Point, played at Army, going to now play here at, from a scheme standpoint. What are you looking at offensively, defensively? They're a spread team, and they have great skilled quarterback. They supposedly have the best tight end in the country, and he is really good. Uh, he, he's a great pass receiver. Uh, they they uh, they throw the ball around. They move it around. They got good guys with the ball in their hands. Uh, now we've played a lot of spread teams, but we also played a lot of wishbone teams. Mm -hmm. It's the in between teams we haven't played very much. <laughs> That's so right. so hopefully we're ready for it, and we will be by game time. It was fascinating when you were talking about this guy. New coaches come in and, and change the, the mindset and make them tougher and stronger and bigger and faster. It sounded to me like you and Brady when you first took over here, and now it's your trying to do that same thing of changing the culture, get in the weight room, don't hang your head, don't worry if you're down. It really sounds like San Diego State, the way you guys have become. Uh, their, their team reminds me of our team last year. Yeah. You go in the season, there are no expectations. Uh, you start playing well, you gain confidence, you play better, you gain confidence, you keep playing better, mm -hmm. and then you end the season with a great victory. Now, now hopefully we're going to prevent that from happening for them, Sure. but their team reminds me of our team last year. Amen. Your quarterback, you mentioned their quarterback, your quarterback. He has had the greatest career in terms of yardage and completions and touchdowns and everything. Ryan Lindley, as you look at him this year, how he's played, how he's progressed, he's had some tough difficulties, a couple of injuries. How have you, have, you, have you thought about him and the way he finished up? Well, I thought he did a veteran's job. I, I mean, he, he went into the season with not the same weapons that he had the year before. He adjusted his game uh, so that our strengths were emphasized, not necessarily his strengths, our strengths were emphasized, and I thought he did a great job of leadership. Uh, so I, I thought he had a pretty good year statistically, and like you say, he's the all-time statistic guy mm -hmm. in the history of the program, which is a big-time deal. But what he did more for our team was keep us on an even keel, keep us working hard, had show great leadership when he didn't have the kind of weapons at wide receiver that he'd had the year before. I, I thought he had a great year. No question. And you have a running back. People are going to see him maybe for the first time nationally on ESPN or the first time since the game against the Naval Academy in the Poinsettia Bowl last year. He's, he's, he fascinates me how this guy can dance around sometimes where coaches might say, get in there, hit the hole. He can dance, but man, it's the kind of thing that if you want to dance like that, go ahead. Because once he sees the hole, mm -hmm. Ronnie Hillman is, is a really different and special guy, is he not? <laughs> no, he's, he's a great talent. But you, you, it's kind of funny how you say that. Every great running back I've ever been around has their own style. That's right. And it's not necessarily the style that everybody wants it to be. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They're successful. Oh, boy. And so you just stay out of those guys' way, and you give them the ball and say, gain yards, and you never <laughs> complain about how they do it because sooner or later a guy like Ronnie's going to make a big play for you and make a huge difference in the game. I remember I was doing the Charger play-by-play -play when they drafted Phillip Rivers, and he had that, you know, that funky sidearm mm -hmm. delivery. I asked Marty Schottenheimer at the time, you're going to change that delivery? He said, absolutely not. I'm <laughs> not doing it. That's the way he does it. I'm staying out of it. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Same exactly. thing. Same he does thing. it, does it, and they're going to do it. If you were, and you are his coach, 
and there's talk about Ronnie Hillman because his high school classes, he's three years removed from that, that he could think about the NFL. I know you want him to stay, but do you think he's ready? I don't, I don't know, but uh, the NFL does a great thing where we can send in names, mm -hmm. and in about two or three weeks, they'll evaluate his draft status. They'll contact the young man. They'll contact us, tell us where they project that he'll be drafted. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and I think that's the right way to do it. We've already done it with Ronnie. We've done it with Leon McFadden. Uh, we've sent it into the NFL. We're waiting for their response. Uh, my personal belief, it's, it's always a young man and his family's decision. It is not my decision. Right. My personal belief is if you're a first or second round draft choice, you should come out mm -hmm. because the upfront money and the security are there that it, it's, it's probably the time to do it and not take a chance for an injury. If you're not in a first or second round status, you ought to stay in school uh, because you can increase your abilities the next year to maybe be drafted higher, mm -hmm. but then there's a college education that you got to think about too. So my personal belief is if you're going to get enough money up front, you should go. If you're not, you should stay in school. We'll find out about Ronnie Hillman as this, uh, as this offseason uh, takes into the, the draft of the NFL in April. We're talking about Louisiana Lafayette. You've been to bowl games five times at New Mexico as the head coach there. Your philosophy on this, I know a lot of, a lot of you know, coaches keep like Shem Beckler and those guys, keep them away, be 100 miles away from the, from the, uh, from the, the site of the, uh, the, the college and, and the game, and uh, no fun. And what's your, how, do, how do you go about this? Because, you, I mean, you want to win the game. It's very, very large. It's big for recruiting, but you want to reward your kids. So how do you do that? How have you, how have you done that? <laughs> well, this one's a little different. This is more like a bye week. Since we're playing so quickly, That's true. you don't have the number of days to prepare and have fun in between. So we're going to give our kids some time off this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not going to practice till Friday. And then we're going to practice Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and probably give them Monday off. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go to the bowl game on Tuesday. And we'll have fun at the bowl game. Uh, but hopefully the day before the game, we'll concentrate and treat it like any other game and play well. Rock, congratulations on a big time. Not easy to take over for a head coaching job uh, when somebody else leaves. Like I said, the Aztecs have not missed a beat. You've done a fantastic job. I appreciate it. Congratulations, Thank you. Rocky. And Thanks. good luck in New Orleans with uh, Aztecs now continuing here. We'll take a look at some of those players Rocky was talking about in those games with the top 10 plays of 2011 in this, again, bowl season for the 8-4 San Diego State Aztecs as Aztecs now continues in a minute. A 2011 Aztec season that begins at home against Cal Poly on September 3 and finishes against Fresno State, win-win, on December 3. From the East Coast to the Army for the first time ever at West Point and just an amazing season where nobody blows them out and nobody scores more than one touchdown against the Aztecs in the second half of an entire season every single game. The top plays of this 2011 Aztec season beginning with number 10 and working our way up. Ronnie Hillman will be the one back. They'll reset Gavin Escobar, the tight end on the near side. Back is Ryan Lindley. He wants to go long. He's got Lockett all by himself. Caught at the 10. Gone. Touchdown, Aztecs. Colin Lockett. On fourth and one, Ronnie Hillman. Big hole, right guard. He's at 20. He broke a tackle 15. Going for the pylon with an inside line. Touchdown, Aztecs. What a player. What a runner. What an Aztec. Sahabas a hold. But up they blew the snap. Running with it. Sahabas to the far side. Will throw it in the end zone. Off the hands of Trickley. Then carry him to the Aztecs. They got the two-point conversion. <laughs> when that happens, boy, it's your day. It's definitely your day. Here's the kickoff again by Soderberg. There, Brandon Davis. This will be three yards deep at the far side, beyond the far hash. And then they cross the field, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Brook outside, foot race. He could be midfield. He is midfield. He is down the far sideline, 20, 10, touchdown Aztecs. Casey really, he's a great guy too, but more of a 
renegade. He's got the long hair flowing out the helmet, a whole arm of tattoos, just more of an edge to him. But even though these two are so different, his teammates have jumped on board with Casey. That's for sure. Well, the renegade just went down, broke Miles Burris, led the conference in sacks last year, and has a huge one here against TCU. Latest in a long line of really terrific linebackers through the years of San Diego State. That's sacked by Miles Burris, number nine, a senior from Granite Bay High School, who will be back, of course, for one more game. That game, the New Orleans Bowl against Louisiana Lafayette. That's the top ten as in ten through six. Now we'll come back with one through five. Best Aztec plays of 2011 in another bowl championship type season. As Aztecs now continues in a minute. Welcome back to Aztecs Now. We're going through the top 10 plays as we have selected for this 2011 football season for the San Diego State Aztecs. Back-to-back, -back, eight, four seasons, back-to-back -back bowl games. That is big stuff. Big stuff. Now the top plays as in five all the way to number one for this season. Third and one, 19-yard line. Deep handoff there. Moemma got a hole. 25, 30, 35. He broke out. He's gone. He's gone. Foot race. Can they catch him? 30, 25. Moemma cuts inside. They go all the way. Touchdown, Aztecs. 81 yards for the freshman, Adam Moemma. Leon Brooks is back at his 15-yard line. Stahamich, she's been a weapon. Another long, lovely spiral. Penalty marker down, they rough the kicker. Now they make a big-time hit out there. Woo! The biggest of the day, I tell you what, the ball was taken by Brooks, and Eric Pinkins just absolutely flattened it. Line of scrimmage, that ball right on the 45-yard line. Robostal talking to Galvin, his running back. Getting him set. Snap a little low. He's able to get it there. He's got too much time to throw. Far side. And a great play by Larry Parker to pick it off. What a turn on the ball. What a defensive play by the Aztecs. Larry Parker. Down to three. Well done. Shotgun looking for the fade route out there in the corner. Escobar. Touchdown Aztecs. What a grab by the big fella in a mismatch with the corner. And the safety, Dion Buchanan. The big 6 6 tight end reached over the top, and this ball game belongs to San Diego State. Ronnie will go across the five, make a stutter step to the near side. Broke a tackle 10, near sideline 15, 20, 25. In space, run, Ronnie, run to midfield. He's gone down the near sideline. He's at the 21. He helmet is long gone. 99 yards. Touchdown. Ronnie Hillman on a 99-yard run. That is the longest run in San Diego State history by one of the great backs. One of the great backs. Had a Marshall Falk, number 28, and there's Ronnie Hillman, number 13. And now Hillman has more yards in this season than even Marshall Falk had in any of his years at San Diego State. Those are the top 10 on a marvelous season. Back-to-back 8-4, -back a win over the Naval Academy last year in the Poinsettia Bowl, and coming up December 17 in New Orleans at the Superdome in the New Orleans Bowl against Louisiana Lafayette. Thanks for being with us on a great, great season of Aztecs Now and a great season of Aztec football.